Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and the bell notification button. I don't know, I went like this. That's the thumbs up. So I asked to God, couldn't figure out what the heck I wanted to do for this video. I have a big Excel spreadsheet of ideas. I just, nothing caught my interest. And then my friend was like, hey, for our blog, the TBR Beyond group, they have their own blog run by the admins. We're going to do a mid-year um, kind of check-in. It's called the mid-year freak out. And she linked me. And it's from originally, like, I think, like, 2015, the thing she sent me from, I think it's called, like, Dearma. Oh, it's a WordPress blog. I will link that. And the TBR and Beyond blog down below. Because I'm... It's always either Watson snoring or my neighbor suddenly doing laundry. It's It's got to be one or the other. Okay, let's try this again without the loud-ass laundry machine noise going on in the background. But we all know this is when Watson will start snoring. So let's just... But I'm going to take that as well as just do some touch-ups, catch-ups of some of the goals that I also set for myself this year. So we'll call it like a... Yeah, we'll go with mid-year freakout tag, I guess. And if you want to do it, do it. And then put a link to it down below and I'll go look at it and give you like a good job high five situation. Now I've read several really good books this year, but I kept coming back to when I was thinking what has been my favorite book. I was going through my, my agenda, book reader, calendar tracker thing, and I just kind of kept coming back to Wicked Saints by Emily Duncan. This is also like an insanely pretty cover. The under dust jacket is like, like that's a lot. And it's like got Grisha vibes and the end pages are freaking gorgeous. And the author is librarian. So like just all of these little reasons, I loved it in addition to really enjoying the story. Favorite sequel is actually a little bit difficult because I didn't realize it until I started going through my book that I have actually read quite a few sequels this year, but I think I have to go with The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson. This is a sequel to Truly Devious, but this whole series is just so freaking good. It's such a good, like, murder mystery. I am so freaking excited for whenever the third book comes out. I need it soon, but this is a series I cannot hype up enough. It's fantastic. So for a new release that you need to read, that you really want to read, I took the perspective of a new release as anything that's been released this year so far. So in the last like six months or so, which pretty easily made me go, oh, <laughs> King of Scars. There is absolutely no t like, uh, t like guessing of when the next book is coming out date. There's no title. There's no cover. I know she's also got two other series on the go. So I'm panicking that this book is going to hurt. and. I have to wait four years for another book. Like, please don't pull a George R. R. Martin or Smith Shannon. I can't do that. She's going to want to write other things. So I think she's showing that with Ninth House being a new adult or an adult book, and then Alex Stern being a contemporary mystery. So, or thriller? Contemporary something. So I'm just scared, okay? I don't know what I'm going to do with this book. Maybe I just keep holding on and waiting until the second book comes out. My most anticipated read for the upcoming months, hands down, easily, is Gideon the Ninth. It is lesbian necromancy, and I am so freaking excited about this. I've heard nothing but just absolute rave reviews, top to bottom. They've already announced the title of the sequel, which gives me really high hopes that we won't have to wait for forever. I freaking love that cover, dear lord. And that's saying that how much I'm interested, but this is coming out in the behemoth month that is September. Like, I don't know if you've looked at the releases coming out in September. I, it is offensive how many books are coming out in September especially, but September and October. Like, why? Why are they doing that? Like, the summer is pretty quiet. Like, y'all could have done, taken some of those that, like, you know are probably going to get swept under the rug with, like, Dark Dawn coming out. Like, so I'm beyond excited for that book. Biggest disappointment books of the year has been kind of a toss-up between Give the Dark My Love by Beth Rivas, as well as Once in Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. This just had too much romance in it. It ruined the entire, like, science aspect appeal that it had for me. The At first I was like, oh, maybe I'll hold on to it because I think I want to read the sequel. But more and more I look at it on my shelf, I'm like, why am I keeping this? I know I'm not going to reread it. Like, let's be real. And Once in Future, I talked about this quite recently um, in my wrap-up. Um, and my review of it, that the book would just didn't have enough information in it. It didn't have enough character growth in it, didn't have enough plot development, um, world development. It had too much time jumps, too much assuming you would understand this. It's like, it, it's fantastic to get that sort of queer representation in sci-fi and fantasies especially, but that was really the only positives I, I could take away from the book. It was just 
there were large gaps of information. Biggest surprise book is kind of difficult, but I was going through again my book and I just kept coming back to The Diviners by Libba Bray. I think that book is most surprising to me, A, because I thoroughly enjoyed it so much. It's a historical fiction mystery, which is something I generally really enjoy, but it's got this paranormal aspect built into it, which can sometimes be a bit of a turnoff for me. But my biggest turnoff is that series has had so many bloody cover changes since the original book has been released that I have zero interest in purchasing them. Absolutely zero. Out of just pure principle, even if I can buy all four of them, which it's going to be once the fourth book comes out, I just can't make myself purchase and give publishers money who did that to a book series, which I don't know why you would do that to a book series, which is so freaking popular that people are like, cool, I'll wait three years between books. I just really want the book. Like, I just for the life of me can't understand what sort of contractual mess ups they had to have with artists or I just, I can't, I couldn't figure out for the life of me what the heck the genre of the series was based on the cover changes. I, I don't understand why they did that. And honest to God, the covers that I read, I don't think any of them matched the actual content. So that was frustrating. But then I read the book and like, I kind of like was able to separate my anger at the publishers for what they did for that whole thing and the actual content that Libba Bray wrote. So I'm absolutely going to be reading the sequels to that book series, but I won't be purchasing them. They will be library boroughs, absolutely. Um, I wouldn't be getting to read them otherwise. Favorite new to me authors is kind of a bit of a toss up and I've like kind of sort of a little bit cheating, but not on one of these. So right off the bat, Joanne He, who wrote Descendant of the Crane, this was fantastic. The cover is freaking beautiful, though. She has another series. I think it's a sci-fi set to come out in 2020, I think. And hopefully we can get a sequel to this. It needs a sequel. I just... Uh, they should have... I really need a sequel to this series. But it was fantastic. And the author just had so many mess-ups with for publication. Like, she never ended up getting her physical arcs, or she got them super late. And then they made a mess-up, and they weren't able to get the books printed on time for its release date, so they had to push the release date back. But they still weren't able to get stock out on time. It's like, for a debut author of color and a woman, like, you could not have stack the decks more against her as a publisher. And then KK Perez or Christina Perez. I'm kind of cheating because I read this in late December, but I put, I read this after I released my like favorites of 2018. So I'm kind of folding late December into 2019, if you get what I'm saying. But KK Perez, I've actually read three books by her in the last six months or so. Sweet Black Waves, Wild Savage Stars, and The Tesla Legacy. I absolutely love her writing. I love her characters. And the Sweet Black Wave series is like high key under hype. It's Tristan these old re retelling and like, oh my god, it's amazing. And like, oh, my newest like fictional crush has got to be Veronica or Stoker from A Curious Beginning. <laughs> I read this book in originally, like the first time, like I think in December 2017, I want to say. And like, I think I then reread the series like mid or late last year or the first couple books when the third book came out. Um, and then I reread the first three books and then read the fourth book again earlier this year. But I group read it this time with other people. And like, I've accepted it now that this is actually my new favorite series. It has dethroned Outlander, which makes my channel name kind of awkward now. But uh, I still love Outlander, but this book has just somehow peaked. I don't, I, I don't know how or why, but it happened and I have to accept it. So Veronica Speedwell, like girl, and Stoker. I think my thing is like they're they're amazing characters separately, but when they're together, and girl, if if Deanna Rayborn doesn't give us a, a them together doing a horizontal refresh, I might lose my mind. Also, really cool news that like just re spikes my love of these characters, especially especially Veronica, is that we are getting a book six and seven. The publisher extended her contract, so we get a book five coming out in twenty twenty, and then a six and a seven, hopefully in 21 and 22. So I'm just, I, uh, this girl, like, I just, uh, she could tell me to like jump off a bridge. I'd be like, hey, cool. Like, which bridge would you like me to do that on? In addition to my love of Veronica Speedwell as a character, another prompt was, who's your favorite fictional character new? And I gotta actually go with Sweet Black Wings again on this of Branwen. I think she's a fascinating freaking character. And I think all of the retellings and the whatever that I've seen mostly, because I don't think I've ever actually read a retelling of Tristan Hazel. It's always like movies and TV shows and that sorts of stuff. I don't think I've ever read a character like the, from Branwen. It's always Tristan and Hazel, like in this Romeo and Juliet sort of romance. But 
that which is not the real story right like i i know that wasn't the real story um but Branwyn is an, an intensely amazing interesting character to me in all the books she's grown so freaking much she does things too that like when i when i'm thinking of like oh this is the situation that she's in this is what she should say and then she says something not identical but the equivalent she doesn't let her get self get rolled over even though this time period she has magic she's juggling with that and then she's like not like oh one true pairing like i slept with this one guy so i'm gonna have to be with him forever there's none of that bull crap she's such a strong character and i love that we got that in this like medieval set i she's just a fascinating interesting really enjoyable not stupid female character and i'm freaking in love with her now for a book that made me cry i don't think i've actually cried this year over a book I think the one that got me the closest this year, though, was White Rose by Kip Wilson. My thing is I knew what was going to happen, but it was getting this voice of a female who resisted in a time when it was no benefit to her to resist, and it would have been easier for her to not resist, and we don't remember her in history. Um, and it's, the things that happened in World War II and the Holocaust are horrific, and we should always have those books like Night by Eli Weasel, like The Librarian of Auschwitz, and all of these stories that are... Uh, you know, or books or films like Schindler's List or, you know, like the book The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, which I don't think I will ever make myself read after how hard I cried after the movie. But I think I want to read the stories of the people who tried to bring it down from within as well, who looked and saw, you know, I feel like it's not easier, but like when you're being a like a perpetrated, you know that it's wrong and you want to fight back. But when you are on the side of those people being per perpetrated and you see that something's wrong and then you do something about it, I feel like that just shows so much about a character and it's not easy. Um, and she paid for it and her family paid for it when she could have just shut up and, and just taken it in like a lot of people did so i think that as well as the quote by her oh i wonder if i can still i think it's on page nine actually i might not be the best behaved girl i don't want, oh my god why is my voice cracking <laughs> sorry i'm kind of almost crying now oh i might not be the best behaved girl i don't want to be the prettiest girl but i am most decidedly the smartest girl and that's someone we need to remember in history and there's no reason for us to not know more about her and learn about her and favorite adaptation that i have seen this year good omens by neil gaiman and terry pratchett the amazon prime adaptation was fantastic i was freaking terrified when i heard that it was getting adapted so i kind of high key panicked but it was all for naught as soon as they released the trailer my like and and the cast my heart calmed down i was like david tennant doesn't do crap movies like paul paul kidby i think that's the Azriel's name they don't do crap movies. Neil Gaiman was involved in this. They released this trailer of the nun singing of the sweet little Antichrist, and Neil Gaiman made a cameo. And I went, oh, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. I've seen it. And then John Hamm's in it. And then, like, I, I calmed the hell down as soon as I saw the trailer. I don't think that's ever happened. And then I actually paid for Amazon Prime in order to access and binge the, the season for the month. Um, which as a millennial, we love free things and we all know how to pirate. Okay. So I went out of my way to make sure to pay legally to access that because I wanted them to get the stats because it's a fantastic, fantastic adaptation. And I have so much faith now in Amazon Prime when they do, uh, if I hear of them purchasing, um, more, more adaptations. Um, it was fantastic. And I think Terry Pratchett would be proud. The next category was like the prettiest book that you, can you tell who's snoring? Take a wild guess. So the next prompt was the prettiest book cover I've purchased this year. And it was kind of a toss up, but I kind of wheedled it down as much as I could to these three babies. Nocturna by Maya Mo Motain. It's like a mosaic. I couldn't remember what the hell the freaking word was when I was talking about it originally. It's the mosaic. Then I definitely have to go with Raven's Tales. She always has these like gorgeous freaking hard covers. So there's like the foil red and then the background with the raven. Like, oh, it's beautiful. And then the under dust jacket is red and it's got this like kind of tightened skinny texture of the book and it's all black like like um ink and it's Edgar Allan Poe and I'm so freaking excited to read this but like this woman gets like the, has has to have some of the greatest luck I've ever seen because there are some pretty ugly ass covers out there especially released for co authors that they don't think are going to be big sellers so I just gotta like praise the publisher's uh amulet for for this beauty and then, of course, Sky Without Stars, this thing in person, 
oh my god it's gorgeous first off they released two versions of the underdress jacket i didn't know that until after i bought it but there's one for um like rebels and one's for like assassins or something like that i can't remember what the term was but i got one and there's another one with this a different um emblem on here it's just really pretty but you'll notice the fleur de lis on here they're in the background people apparently didn't notice this until i started pointing it out but they're kind of in the faded background um because it is a retelling of les mis in space like the lunar chronicles and i think the globe with like it looks kind of like earth but it's also definitely a planet and then having like the gold eiffel tower and like just all of these like historical landmarks and you flip it and it's like a space station like <sighs> and the last prompt was books that you want to read like a book that you want to read by the end of the year and i kind of have two one of them is definitely dark dawn by jay kristoff i need that series to be wrapped up the ending of book two hurt my soul it's gonna it's scarred there for forever and then i also need to get to finale a i just want to finish another freaking series but also i'm hearing nothing but absolute praise from this and as a reader all I see is authors having a really difficult time wrapping up series that are so good. It's like the Game of Thrones situation, right? Like everyone was so hyped and then season eight happened. We all know how the mass majority of you feel about season eight, that they just ran, like started scrambling two seasons of plot and then cut crap out so no character arcs made any sense anymore. And they forgot to wrap up a bunch of stuff and they forgot Starbucks cuts and scenes. All of these different chaotic things. But I'm not hearing anything, anything negative about finale. So... I loved books one and two, Carvel and um, Legendary, and I'm insanely curious. I really, really, really want to get to this. So early in the year, too, I also set some personal goals of things and series that I wanted to reread, and I'm making progress on quite a few of them. The first one that I don't think I'm going to be actually be able to do is the reading of Les Mis. I didn't think of it until after I started trying to do it, but I need to own a copy of Les Mis. It's massive, and it's not it's not a book you can binge. And even with my library giving me, I think, two extensions for each three-week loan, I wasn't able to get through it fast enough. So I need to actually purchase a copy to do that. So I'm going to see if I can find a really pretty, like, anniversary or illustrated edition or something. I really wanted the Barnes & Noble classic one that was out that's, like, white and, like, bold. And then my friend Jennifer was so sweet and tried to order it for me. And then they sent her this, like, ugly-ass old paperback. And we're like, oh, sorry, yeah, we didn't update our website. But that one's not available anymore. Like, aren't you a large franchise, Barnes & Noble? Get your crap together. But I've actually made quite a bit of progress. I am in the middle of my reread on the Jacoby series. I've read the first two, I believe. I also managed to do my reread of The Girl From Everywhere duology. I read that, like, right away. I've made progress. I'm on book, well, getting to get to going to get to book two of the Queen of the Tearling series, which I wanted to reread. I'm almost done my read of the Outlander series. I just have to get to written in my own heart's blood, and then I will be ready for Go Tell the Bees I Am Gone. I think that's what the ninth book is supposed to be called. Uh, last I saw, she wants to try and have it finished, written at the end of uh, 2019. So hopefully we will get a 2021 publication. Right? I managed to reread Truth Witch and Blood... No, Truth Witch and Wind Witch, and then read Blood Witch. So I'm done my reread of that series. I am still working my way through The Queen's Thief. I originally put that goal, and then I found out that the next book got pushed back to 2020. So I think I finished The King of Atolia, and then the next one is like A Conspiracy of Thieves, and then I'll be done. Okay, I'm 99% sure that's where I'm at. <laughs> I am making way through my Niall Schusterman catch-up. I've finished dry. I read the first book of Unwind, and I'm hoping to get to the second book of Unwind when politics are less depressing. I'm almost done reading the Precious Stones trilogy. I've read Ruby Red and Sapphire Blue. I just have to get to Emerald Green, I think the third one's called. My big, like, monthly challenge for myself is to read one nonfiction book a month, and I have done that so far. All of the months, anyways, that I counted, that I went through and checked. And I'm actually really enjoying them. There's only one that I've DNF'd. Um, my favorite one was probably I'll Be Gone in the Dark, which is the first one I read in January. But the butchering, or the art of butchering was also, like, insanely fantastic and interesting. I've been just interesting learning new stuff. I'm also almost done my read of the Graceling series. I have read Graceling. Fire is on my TBR for this month in June. And then the last one, Bitter Blue, will be kind of probably a July or August read. And kind of my last-ish challenge thing is the TBR and Beyond group. We made a reading challenge for the year and I, I actually have done insanely well on it. A YA novel that doesn't include a romantic element. I wrote Skyward. I don't remember. It was like, I wrote this down like a month and a half after I read Skyward, but I don't remember there being any romance. I remember there being like kind of hints of, oh, maybe this will happen in the future, but I don't remember there being any romance. If I'm wrong, please tell me because I've written it down. A prompt that I haven't filled and I honest to God don't know remember anything I was required to read in school other than Shakespeare plays. 
So if you you know of a book that you read in school that you didn't hate, please put it below and then I can use it because all I remember is having to read A Heart of Darkness, which I will never force myself through that again. That was painful as hell. 1984, again, eh, no. Fifth Business, which was one of the stupidest books I've ever had to read. My brother loves that and read it leisurely. I hated the book. Maybe it was because I was forced to read it. I hated the book. And then like the Shakespeare plays, that's all I remember from school. And then I, it makes it more complicated that I got to take like a free open English class because I was like, excel, like not accelerated, but like had a bunch of empty spaces. And they're like, okay, well, if you want to take an English class, you can do this like freebie. Basically, you can read whatever the hell you want. So I literally just got to read whatever the heck I wanted. So I don't know. If you have a recommendation, please put below. A book with a Goodreads rating of 3.5 or less. I actually don't know what I'm going to read for that because I don't have any on my TBR, I think, that are that low ranking. Um, I think the only one that I've seen like that is Lady Chatterley's Lover, but I put it as a banned book and I don't think I have any other banned books that I really want to read right now. So again, if you got any suggestions, let me know. A graphic novel or a manga, I can't seem to decide what I want to read. So I'll figure something out. I may, oh, I still have to read, um, Watchmen and I actually own that. So I will get to Watchmen eventually. So that is my mid year freak out wrap up. I don't know why it's called freak out. I feel like I've actually read an awful lot. I'm reading my like 115th book this as we speak right now. So I'm on well on my way to hitting my 200 goal mark. And I haven't DNF'd that many. I think I've maybe DNF'd like three or four books this year, like nothing compared to the past few years. So I'm excited to just keep reading it. And so make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back and let me know how you're doing this year. Like put it down below. Tell me you don't, it doesn't have to be freak out. Brag about what you've done. Like you don't have to panic all the time.